Okay, ladies and gents, uh, welcome to the new episode of Like and Like. And today I'm speaking to the person who probably requires, most definitely requires no introduction, Mr. Uh, Peter Morville. Hello there. Hello, Peter. Happy to be here. Yeah, what are you up to these days, Peter? Well, I, I finished uh, my latest book, Planning for Everything, and so since then I've been uh, promoting the book, speaking at conferences, uh, and also just uh, getting back into consulting after taking a break. Okay, and what, the recent book, that's uh, nothing to do with uh, uh, information architecture, I presume? Um, well, everything is connected to information <laughs> okay. architecture in some way. Um, but uh, this, this book, I'll even hold it up here, Planning for Everything. Uh -huh. um, it's, I actually wrote this book for a general audience, uh, people outside the you know, information architecture, user experience, and design worlds. Uh, my stretch goal is that folks will hand this book to their teenager and say, you need to get better at planning, read this book. All right, uh, so it's not only about our industry inside uh, thingies, but, but could be useful for, for other people, yeah? Yeah, I think it will be useful for people in the industry because many of us are professional planners. We're helping our organizations to plan products and services that may not be launched for a year or two and mm -hmm. will hopefully be used well into the future. So we're all in the business of imagining new products and services into existence. Um, but I also believe that because of that, we have a lot to offer the rest of the world. The, 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 the practices and methods and tools of design are actually really helpful for helping people plan things that have nothing to do with software and websites. Okay. So you could plan your school excursion as well using these tools, yeah? Absolutely. Plan your vacation, plan your wedding, plan your retirement. Okay. <laughs> right, the book is still on my, on my list, so um, hopefully before you come to Poland I'll, I'll get it uh, over and done and we can talk about it. So Peter, like, uh, let's jump to the first question. As you know, the format is to mention one thing that you, that you recently discovered that you like and one thing that you don't like. So, so what is that one thing that you, uh, that you particularly fond of? Okay, so I'm going to be difficult um, for, for each of these questions. I'll tell you what I love, but I'll also um, sort of point out the problem with what I love. And when I tell you what I hate, I'll uh -huh. say what's good about that. Oh, okay, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm complicated that way. Um, so. So the, thing, the first thing that popped to mind when you asked that question about what I love, um, so there's a woman, uh, uh, a friend of mine, Indy Young. Uh, some of uh, your audience may know uh, of Indy. She was one of the co-founders of Adaptive Path and has written uh, books, Mental Models and um, Practical Empathy. Uh, she's now a freelance researcher. And, and, and I, I discovered that recently she has been uh, – uh, kind of framing her work by using this uh, this dichotomy of the problem space and the solution space. And her argument is that um, people within organizations spend the vast majority of their time in solution space. They're, they're designing solutions. Uh, and that that, work, that fits very well within the sort of the agile life cycle, this, you know, the, the two week, two to four week sprints, mm -hmm. you can kind of work on solutions. Her argument is that her work as a researcher is outside of that space in what she calls the problem space, okay. where you're trying to understand the problem, you're trying to understand your customers in a more holistic sense, and that that does not fit at all within the agile sort of sprint-based life cycle. You need to take more time to go deep. And, and I loved uh, that way of, of kind of framing the work that she does as an effort to escape this, uh, uh, this, this, this sort of trap of trying to chunk everything into you know, one to two weeks or two to four weeks. Uh, as an information architect, that's one of the challenges I have too. So I, I just love the simplicity the, of, mm. of her model. But speaking of that, Peter, do you think there is a way, um, like having said all that, there's a way to, to sort of fit that uh, square thing in the, in the round hole of, uh, of, of the sprint model. Now, how, how to fit research into this uh, sprint model? Yeah. You can do research as part of the, uh, as part of the sprint life cycle, and, and people do. Um, but what Indy is arguing is that there, there is a kind of research where you're trying to get a more holistic understanding of your customer or your user and, and their world. Uh, where you really need to take a little more time and and um, 
and 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 so I you know I, I, I sort of celebrate what she's doing there, kind of fighting against uh, what's become the dominant mindset of fit everything into these small chunks. Mm. I will I will kind of now flip it and say mm -hmm. there's a I have a concern with that framing, which is that uh, when we when we fixate on problems, when we sort of call things problems, we may lose sight of opportunities that don't present as problems. Okay. Um, Mark Reddick has been talking about this, and actually I noticed that um, my friend Steve Portigal will be talking about this at Product Camp um, with his talk, Stop Solving Problems. Yeah. Right? So, um, you know, so I, I think what Indy's doing is great, um, but, but one of the ways that I approach the world is to always look at the pros and cons, right? So I, I kind of love what she's doing, but I also see, you know, that, that there's some, uh, some things that can get lost in any way of framing or mapping. Mm -hmm. That's nice. That's nice. And also, like I, I keep, I keep uh, reminding myself. I once heard a nice, uh, uh, nice saying that apparently an intelligent person is a person who can maintain two opposing ideas in their head at the same time, and you are clearly doing that. So <laughs> that's cool. Absolutely, that's I believe cool. in that. All right, and what's the other thing? So the thing I hate, um, and I'm going to stay on the theme here. So I'll tell a little story. So um, uh, six weeks, a couple months ago, I started talking with, um, with the client that I'm currently working with. And so um, my client is in a Fortune 500 organization. It's a massive global enterprise, um, $20 billion a year in revenue, 70,000 employees, right, spread all over the world. And they, the way that they framed their, their problem, they want help. Uh, they want to be able to do a better job of sharing and integrating data and information across the entire enterprise. Okay. Right? So there's all sorts of uh, websites, um, technologies that are used for managing data and information. It's a massive challenge. Mm -hmm. So we started, we sort of came up with this idea of a multi-phase approach, and the first phase would be nine weeks. Uh, and we sort of talked through quite a bit of detail what this engagement would look like. So it looked like it was going to go ahead, and then out of the blue, I get an email from my client, and he says, um, what could you do in one to two weeks? And, you know, I, I uh, let's just say I got a little bit upset at the, at the time, because it's like the, the, the scale of the problem we're trying to, to sort of wrestle with is so massive. Thankfully, I was working with a business partner who, uh, who, who sort of had a cool head and, and kind of pushed back and said, well, how about we meet in the middle and, and we sort of start out with a five week kind of, uh, you know, definition phase. Uh -huh. and, 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 and the client agreed to that. And okay. so I've just started that work and, and it's going really well. But you know this this flips back to, to the the point I was making about you know, the work India is doing, that you know it wasn't even our client that wanted to try to do this in one to two weeks. He was getting pushback from some senior stakeholders. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. The organization has recently shifted to an agile model uh -huh. because of software, but they're now trying to frame everything. Everything they do uh -huh. needs to be agile, right? Oh, please, um, yeah. And so I'm. You know, I'm pushing back on that same kind of mindset and saying, you know, t to flush out an enterprise information architecture, you need to take more time. So, on the one hand, I sort of hate that, that the business world has has sort of taken on this kind of cult-like mentality that everything has to be chunked into two-week um, uh, sprints. At the same time, I sort of love it because it gives me something to wrestle with and, and, and uh, you know, some, creates some opportunities for me to help make a positive yeah, difference. Yeah, 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 same thing. So it was like trying to deliver a baby with <laughs> two weeks sprints, yeah? Right. You know why. <laughs> All right, that's, that's a cool one. Um, and Peter, lastly, um, what's that one thing you strongly believe in that, that is obvious to you, but uh, possibly not that obvious to your uh, colleagues in the industry, your clients maybe. Yeah. So um, again, to keep on theme, I, I, I believe that what, um, what we're wrestling with right now is an, is an ancient battle. Um, 
uh, between people who are more drawn to surface and image and people who are more drawn to structure and, and substance. There's sort of a, an, an age old battle between, you know, let's do a quick fix, you know, the kind of short term, more um, kind of limited uh, kind of, you know, uh, mindset and the, the kind of the folks that are really get excited about the term, the big here and the long now, right? How can we take the more holistic system wide perspective? Um, often it feels like this is these battles are, are completely new. Um, recently, it's been framed in, you know, by the Facebook motto of um, move fast and break things, mm -hmm. right? Um, move fast and break things. Uh, and and we've seen a lot of things get broken recently, in, 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 and yeah. not just in software companies, but in society at large. Um, I think this is a, an ancient battle that, that we kind of go back and forth on, and, and you can never completely win. Um, but you know, you, you sort of try to define what you think is right, and then and then kind of um, you know do your best to, to sort of push for for making the world a better place. Okay. Okay. So you you, you think this. Uh, uh... Majority of people would disagree with you that. Uh, so, uh, so I get you right. Yeah. You you are more after uh, the big vision rather than quick quick fixes. That that's what you're saying, right? Yeah. So uh, yeah. So as a as someone who's been doing information architecture for a quarter century now, um, there was a there was a time in the information architecture community where people people felt very. We, the, people were felt very frustrated because we weren't succeeding at convincing the whole world you know of the the vital importance of information architecture and and and, and folks within the community were blaming ourselves saying oh we're not doing a good job of marketing or promoting oh, okay. or explaining information architecture mm -hmm. and of course you can always do a better job of explaining but um, but my view is that there's a limited percentage of the population that is willing to really engage in that deep structural thinking. Mm -hmm. For a lot of folks, when you start talking about uh, structural design, taxonomies, metadata, mm -hmm. their eyes glaze they over. And they don't. They don't want to. You know, they say, "Just show me the. You know, show me the design. Right? Yeah, I don't. I yeah. want to see the surface. Yeah. I don't. I mm -hmm. don't want to dig into structure." Mm -hmm. it, back in the 1970s and 1980s. Uh, there was a, there were a lot of really brilliant people doing work in what was called systems thinking, hmm. um, and you know I've gone back and looked through that work. There's there's great stuff there, but it never really took off. It never became popular. I think for the same reasons, it's it's too complex and abstract for most people. Hmm. So, I think that the folk, those of us that 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 love this structural kind of deep systems thinking work the meta information world, yeah. yeah we're always going to be in the minority hmm. and we're always going to be the underdog kind of fighting the good fight yeah. and it's, so i don't think that that's obvious um uh but but it, it's helpful to sort of to understand that bigger context that um, it's okay to be the underdog, and you can really celebrate. Uh, you know, uh, in this context of the the client I'm working with, they have a small team of three or four um, people within their information architecture team, mm -hmm. and they're up against this seventy thousand person enterprise. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's exciting for me to have an opportunity to help them and to work with them. Um, you know, but you got to start by recognizing we're the little guy here. <laughs> Let's see what we can yeah, do. Yeah, brilliant. And Peter, moving on to your talk at um, a product camp, uh, can you give us a, a you know quick introduction to, to that and uh, and your workshop as well? And I got to add that your work your workshop is selling like uh, like hotcakes, really. Like uh, only four four tickets left now, so so you ha you will have a full room. So what should people expect from the workshop? Some practical exercises as well. Yeah, so the workshop is focused on, you know, so it's called Planning for Strategic Design. Um, so that's my opportunity to, to sort of take some of the framework from the book and apply it to the, to the world of uh, user experience, design, product, um, product uh, management. So what we will be doing there is kind of 
looking at the challenges that folks are planning with res uh, are facing with respect to planning in their organizations and uh, really working together to kind of to come up with uh, ways to, to start solving those those problems mm -hmm. uh, so I've done variations of this workshop a few times in the past year or so and it's um, it's actually the best workshop I've ever done okay, because cool. it really engages people and gets them gets them working on real problems in their organizations today. So I'm very excited for that. All right, brilliant. Looking forward to that. Okay, Peter, thank you very much for your time. Uh, have a you know wonderful day, and uh, see you in June in Gdynia. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks All a lot. Right, thanks, Peter. Bye bye.